Sister Donna will be glad to have them. The uh, choir is going to do our special singing this morning, so let's pray for them.
I want us to be together in heaven. Amen. It's good for us to be together this morning. Amen. Hey, while they're coming down, why don't you stand up this morning and turn around and welcome somebody and tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. And tell them it's good for us to be together this morning. Amen. Hey, the Bible says it's good and pleasant for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. That's our prayer this morning. I want all of us to be together in heaven. Amen. But I'm so glad that we can get together like we are to assemble this morning. Amen. Uh, God said in Hebrews 10 and chapter uh, verse 25, not forsaking yourselves, assembling together. Amen. And that's what we've done today. We've assembled. Amen. We've got, uh, we've got pews in order. We've got people sitting in order. Uh, we've got musicians up here ready to sing uh, or play and uh, singers ready to sing. And uh, we've got people ready to worship the Lord. Amen. Hey, we've got deacons sitting on the front row. We've got a uh, uh, pitiful little preacher up here. Amen. Uh, and we, we just got everything in order. Amen is what I'm trying to say. We're assembled together. This is what God said to do. And uh, I know he's pleased when we do that. So thank you for being here. I wish you could see what I see. Someone says, you say that all the time, preacher. I'm telling you, standing here, it looks good looking out. Amen. And thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Good to see everyone. You're not here by accident. I want you to know that this morning. God's brought us all together. Um, I promise you, last week, what a great congregation, great services we had on Sunday. But I want to say something. It was not the same as it is right now. And I'm going to tell you what's special about this morning. This morning is special because no one has ever lived through this service. God's allowed us to be together. And this is brand new like His mercies are for us this morning. So let's get our minds on Him and worship Him as they sing this song this morning. Y'all pray for us this morning. Hunter's wanting me to do this, and I ain't never done it before, so. I've heard that His grace was amazing. I've heard of His wonderful peace. I've heard how His love lifted sinners out of their wretched misery. But I didn't know this Redeemer. I was so lost and hell bound. Till one day I met him at Calvary. And there neath the cross I found 
the half hasn't been told this world can't contain just how good he is how unworthy i am oh praise his dear forgiveness a pardon for all I had done I didn't expect all his blessings made clean and made whole was enough but he's more than I ever imagined more precious than silver or gold Jesus is everything to me he satisfies my longing soul. The half hasn't been torn. This world can't contain just how good he is, how unworthy I am. Oh, praise his dear name. All that I faithful and true the half hasn't been told this world can't contain just how good he is how unworthy I am oh praise his dear name all that I I just really like the words of that last song and it ain't my best singing but I ain't worried about it because I'm just thankful that I have the ability to praise him and that I can sing for him and it doesn't matter if it sounds pretty to um, Hollywood it doesn't matter if it sounds pretty to a music producer it's music in his ears and he loves me this morning he loves you this morning and um, I just want to thank God for all of his blessings on my life and I got saved when I was 11 years old, and I never thought that when I asked him to forgive me of my sin that I would be standing where I am today and have the blessings in my life that I have. And um, God has just been so good to me, and I am so unworthy to even to even be able to cry out to him is just, just a blessing in and of itself. And I'm thankful I don't have to go through Mary, and I don't have to go through other people to, to get to Jesus. I can just go straight to Him, and He loves me, and He loves you today. And I'm not a preacher. I'm not going to claim to be one. And there's no, but 
If y'all are in here today and you're lost or you're going through something in your life and you need a touch from the Lord, y'all please come down here and meet him on your knees today. Life is so short and, and time is fleeting and, and we could die on the way home today. And if you in, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you today to please make that decision to trust him. Out on the water, storms raging high, the waters around them, they were troubled that night. Fear filled their hearts, they felt they would die, they failed to remember that the master was nigh, then he spoke the all stood still even the waters they obeyed his will and he calmed their storm just like he will mine if I just remember he lives deep inside so why should I like to start a little different today. Uh, Allison, I want you to get your microphone right here. I'm going to put you on the spot. You know how I do. Uh, since you, first time you sung that song, what I want you to do is I want you to go back to that bridge line of that first song, and I want you to sing that here in just a minute. But I want to say this morning, thank you everyone. I know we have here at the church a uh, Facebook account, uh, Evergreen Free Will Baptist Church on Facebook. And thank all those who share our services. Amen. If you have a Facebook account and you're not ashamed of the gospel or ashamed of your church and you'd like to uh, share that, continue to share it. I realize when more share it, the gospel gets out to more people. So I wanted to say that this morning while everybody was here. Thank you to those who do it. I know there's a faithful uh, ones that do it, but if you haven't done it, uh, I encourage you, if you would, do that. Uh, amen, and, and we're thankful for this. Uh, thank you for that song that you just sung, and I want to say this. I never do this. I'm not, I never do this, but tonight 
if you've ever faced anything in your life and you can look back and say, I wish I would have trusted God more or I wish I'd have done things differently and you've and you face things and you and you're just smart enough to know that you've been through things, you've been through storms, and there's more going to come if God allows us to live, then I would encourage you and implore you and beseech you with everything I got, not because I'm preaching tonight, I promise you that is not where I'm coming from, but I would encourage you to be in this service tonight if you've ever faced a storm or feel like you may go into another one. Uh, let's always remember you're either coming out of one or you're going going into one. Always remember that. So tonight... Uh, God's laid something on our heart. I believe it'll help us. It has truly helped me. It's helping me right now. But this morning, Acts chapter 16 is where God's got us. Amen. Acts chapter 16. And, and uh, uh, that first song you sung, that bridge line, when you got to it, the Spirit really spoke to me. And I, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but just a cappella. And everybody listen to this line or two, whatever it is, in that bridge. Uh, uh, what she said, what the songwriter wrote. So if you are searching for answers, unsure of what you should do, don't wait any longer to trust Him. Jesus is faithful and true. Amen. That's the line I wanted you to have in your mind before we read this scripture. Amen. Acts chapter 16. Let's look in verse uh, number 13. Acts chapter 16. Down in verse number 13. A -a -a Amen. The Bible would say in verse number 13, And on the Sabbath day we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont. To be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which uh, resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, if, I, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. You know what? That's a, that's a statement right there. We're going to read some more, but that's a statement right now that people today, I believe, would be scared to make. If you have judged me to be faithful unto the Lord. Huh, that, what a statement Lydia could make right there. Huh? You've known me for just a little while, but what you know of me, would you, would you judge me to be faithful to the Lord? I know it's not popular. I know people don't want to hear it. But everybody wants everything to be faithful to them. But when it comes to our relationship with God, would we dare to ask someone, if we have been found faithful. Verse number 16. And it came to pass, here we go again, as we went to where? As we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soup slaying, saying, And the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, these are the servants of the Most High God which show us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said unto the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out that same hour. Verse 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers and besought them to the magistrate, saying, These uh, men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our 
city. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Father, we love you this morning and we ask you now, Lord, we thank you for what we've already felt, God. I know everyone in this place is searching for something, God. And Lord, they're looking for something. And God, I know that the only place that we can find true peace, true love, a, 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 a true a, a, a freedom is in you, God. And Lord, I pray for everyone that's searching, God, that they'll find out what they need today, oh God, through your word and through your spirit. And we'll thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. 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 Let's look right there now in, in, in verse number, um, uh, let's look and see what it says there in verse number 16 again. Amen. Hey, keep your Bibles open now. Don't set it down nowhere. Keep it open because I want us to just stay right here. I'm not going to be a, a, a dancing around in Scripture. I'm going to be staying right here in this one. So I want you to make sure that the preacher's lining up with the Word of God. Amen. Hey, look, a preacher's no preacher at all if he don't stay with the Word of God. Amen. I like stories about Grandmama. I may tell a story about Grandma, but I'm telling you the only thing that's going to give us help is thus say the word of God amen the word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path amen the word is forever settled in heaven amen hey we are to desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God Amen. I tell you what, if Christians would just stick with the word, amen. Hey, everybody's got thoughts, everybody's got uh, opinions, amen. Hey, everybody's got what they think is this or that or the other. But if we would just stick with the word. Church, listen to word, amen. Hey, he told the church over there, he says, Thou hast had little strength, but you have kept my word. Amen. Thank God for his word. Thank God for his word. Amen. Hey, it's his word this morning. Look at what it says now, verse number uh, uh, 16. And it came to pass when we went to prayer that a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. She was possessed with a spirit of divination. Huh? How about that word this morning, amen? That, that ain't a word, Brother Larry, me and you use when we meet at the breakfast in the morning and talk, is it? Huh? It ain't a word that just comes across our lips a whole lot. It was a spirit of divination, amen? So what is this word divination this morning? Hey, if it's in the Bible, we ought to look up and see what it means, amen? Hey, anybody want to throw out a definition for a divination, huh? You, you may be hesitant this morning to throw out a definition for such a word because it's not familiar to any of us in the form but it's a little bit more familiar to us when we get into this word than we even know here's what the definition for divination is this spirit that this woman had it's the practice of seeking knowledge of the future for unknown or the unknown by supernatural means everybody wants to know what's coming next Huh? Everybody wants to know what's coming next. But here in this scripture, we can see, amen, divination, if you was to say, what is divination today? Hey, put it on our terms today, preacher. Hey, we're seeing this in the Bible. It's not a word that we use, but put it on terms today so we can understand. Okay, here's what we have, divination today. That's the title of the message, divination today. We have fortune tellers. We got tarot cards. We got the crystal balls. We got astrology. Hey, we got numerology. We got all these things. Can I say something this morning? If you practice in any of these things, they are nothing but sinister, superstitious, spiritualism, hey, and imagination is all they are. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all. Amen. That's all they are. If you're trying to go to Sister Rose when you need to go to the Savior of the world, you're going to the wrong place. Well, I like to read my horoscope. Ha! Ha! The word is where we need to go, amen. Hey, all these things in divination would come from, it's fraud that comes from the father of lies. I'm in the Bible, ain't I? That's why we ought to stick with oracles instead of omens. And when I say oracles, 
uh, the divination tries to take that word too. But I mean the writings of God is what I mean. Amen. If we're going to go to anything, we need to go to the oracles. Amen. The first principles, the oracles of God. Amen. Which is the Bible is what I'm trying to say. The written word of God. If we're going to have any kind of divination in our lives, it better be the written word of God. Luke uh, chapter 16 if we're going to find out anything that's going to happen in the future, we can find it right here. We can find divination today in this scripture. We can find it today. Anybody interested this morning? Huh? Uh, I don't know if you're interested or if you're bored, but would you silence? you got to let me know something now. Hey, hey, look, who's interested in divination today? Can I say something? If you're in search of the truth this morning, amen? Hey, if you're in search of something, I believe, hey, look, I, I, maybe I'm gullible, but I think everybody has come this morning, hey, in search of something that's true, amen? Hey, there's so much wickedness and so much going on in our world today, Brother Larry. Hey, you still are Brother Larry. Hey, see how I'm saying? Hey, hey you, you know what I mean? It's so much going on in our world today. Everybody, I believe, is looking for the truth. Even the crazy people are looking for truth. And I might be in the crazy category. So that when I say that, I, I'm, I'm saying it out of love. But I want to say if we're in searching for the truth today, if we're practicing seeking knowledge of the unknown, of the future, am I right? Y'all waiting on something coming in the future? How many ultrasounds you done had? Because everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to know. And this morning, you're not here by accident because God's got us put together because he wants to show you something this morning. Huh? And I'm going to show us divination today. Hey, everybody wanting to know the truth. I'm going to show us right here in the word of God what we, can, what we can definitely for sure see if we're on our way to the truth, if we're on our way to find out what's going on, here's what we'll see. Let's look in the Word of God. Now look back in the Bible, 16, look at what it says. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. Mm. If anybody's praying, they're trying to look for truth. Hey, they might be praying to a false god. They may be praying to a stone god, a big Buddha. Hey, they may be praying, but they're looking for truth. Now, don't take that away from them. Hey, they might not find it in what they're praying to, but if they're praying, they're looking for truth. And it says they were going to prayer, and a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us. And hey, look, and look at verse 17. And she followed Paul and us and said, these men are servants of the Most High God to show us a way of salvation. Huh? Hey, how many of you can see that right now? Amen. Come on, Brother Hunter. Come on, we're going to prayer now, brother. Come on, Brother Larry. Let's go to prayer this morning. Come on, brother. Hey, we're going to prayer. Hey, we're going to prayer. Hey, look. Come on, let's go. Let's go to prayer. Hey, hey, we're going to prayer. Oh, hallelujah. You, you want to lead us this morning, Brother Leon? Okay. Hey, we're going to pray to the Most High God now. Amen. We're going to pray. To, and then all of a sudden, come on, come on behind us there, Al. Hey, here comes this look mean now. Don't they look? Throw your jacket over your head or something. Look mean. Hey, and here we go. And, and, here she, and she's sitting there saying, say it one time. These are the Most High God. Yeah, these are servants of the money. Hey, hey, and she, servants. yeah, and so they're going to prayer. They're doing something good, and this, this demon, oh, Lord. possessed woman, thank y'all, she was mocking them, is what he said. Hey, look, she was mocking them, and I want to say something. Here's my first point now. If we're going to find the truth, if we're going to, if everybody's looking for the truth, if everybody's looking for something, here's what I want to say about divination today. There'll be interruptions along the way. If you're trying to get to a place where you can find out some truth, you can get some peace from God, you need freedom from something that's been holding you captive, hey, if you need there, there'll be interruptions along the way. Uh, come on now, I know there's some spouses that was on their way this morning, amen. And when they pulled into this parking lot, they was a fussing and fighting about something. And they come in here and say, hey, good morning, good to see you. Ooh, oh, or am I the only one that woke up this morning and the devil was trying to keep you from coming to church? Amen. Uh, Help me out, Sister Dreamy. You, you climbed on board on that one, didn't you? Hey, hey, look here. I'm telling you, if you're searching for the truth this morning, if you're looking for something that's real, there will be interruptions on the way. Oh, God, help us this morning. There'll be interruptions on the way. If you're searching for the truth, the devil's going to want to hitchhike a ride. Y'all ride with me now. <laughs> Woo! 
Oh, did you hear that? Uh, you give the devil an inch, he'll want to be a ruler. If you searching for it this morning, there'll be interruptions on your way. Oh, I can name them this morning if you want me to. Huh? It could be the children not getting ready. It could be you couldn't find your hairbrush. I don't know. Hey, it could be something that small. Anybody ever remember riding with your spouse when you had small kids and it was something as small as you couldn't find your hairbrush? How many of you, how many of you sisters remember mama brushing your hair with that hairbrush? And you wouldn't wake up. There's interruptions along the way is what we see. But I want to say this morning that not... Not that they were coming to church, though they were. Not that they were coming for fellowship, though we loved. But they were going for prayer. So you can come to church and not even be, not be involved. You might not even be involved this morning. You ain't even got no idea what the title is this morning. Huh? You wish I'd go ahead and get to point number four and be done with it right now. Now that's what you're thinking. How long is this going to take? Lord, it's been going to 12, 15 every Sunday. I hope it don't do that this morning. I don't know. Hey, look, look. I, what I'm saying is if you're trying to get to the truth, there'll be interruptions on the way and not just to come to church or to fellowship and shake hands, but if you come to actually pray out to God, there'll be interruptions on the way. They will be, and if you come in to pray, they, hey, look, who, who still believes in prayer this morning? I'm trying to move on. I do got four points. Who believes in prayer this morning? Hey, have you ever said we're going to pray, Brother Doug? We're going to get together. Hey, and interruptions, they'll never turn. Thank you for our Sunday school teacher. He talked about the importance of prayer this morning and how Jesus modeled that thing. And that if you was going to pray, there's going to be some interruptions along the way. You know, Acts, the book of Acts, we call it the Acts of the Apostles. But this morning, when we're talking about going to prayer, when I read, when you read Acts and you read this in context, and they went to prayer, they went to prayer, and you look, start looking in the book of Acts, it's the Acts of Prayer. We're going to call it the Acts of Prayer this morning. Hey, let me show us in the Bible now. Let me show us a few things. Acts chapter 1, hey, they went into the upper room and they continued in prayer is what the Bible says. Acts chapter 3, Peter and John, they went up into the temple at the hour of prayer, the Bible says. Acts chapter 4, it says they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to pray. Acts chapter 6 says they picked out deacons so the apostles could continue in prayer. Hey, you go to Acts chapter uh, uh, 9, Peter prayed and Tabitha, Dorcas, whatever you want to call her, was dead and came alive. Hey, Acts chapter 10, Cornelius was praying, Peter was a praying. If you know your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. Acts chapter 11, Peter was praying and God was proven. Acts chapter 12, 12 Peter was in prison and the church was praying. Acts chapter 13, they was praying and fasting and sending out missionaries. Acts chapter 14, they was praying and ordaining elders. Acts chapter 15, there's no prayer. Read it when you get home, but there's a lot of problems. Just go read Acts chapter 15, see if I ain't, hey, see if I ain't in the Bible. Not the word prayer, nowhere in there, Brother Jay. Acts chapter 15. So we come now to Acts chapter 16. And they was going where prayer was wanted. And they went on down by the riverside to pray. Huh? Hey, and I want to say this morning that if you ever go on anywhere to pray, there will be some interruptions along the way. Amen. There will be some interruptions along the way. I know I'm not the only one that's come to church. Hey, and the devil fought me all the way there. Mama, you can say amen. I mean, we used to have kids. We used to have to raise them, get them dressed. Hey, come to church. And the hey, there'd be some interruptions along the way. Especially if you're coming to pray. Look at verse 17 now. And the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, 
These men are servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. What do y'all see right there? I'm talking about somebody going to look and go coming to prayer, eh? looking for the truth, eh? trying to get truth. Eh? They try, they're going after something, they're looking for something, and there's interruptions along the way, and I realize that there's sarcasm on what the preacher says. Thank you. I need blessings right now. I need you to help me right now. Huh? Because I'm going to tell you something. You stand where I stand. You look out and see beautiful people. But you also stand where I stand. And there will be a lot of sarcasm on what you say. Huh? I'm telling you this woman spoke the truth. But behind that truth, what, what was anger, was, was bitterness, hey, was self-servingness, was wickedness, was of the devil. And she said the truth. Hey, but it was with sarcasm. She ain't the first one who started that. The, hey, Brother Jay, the devil started that in that garden. Taking the truth and putting your spin on it. Hey, and putting sarcasm behind it. Oh, God said you would surely die. <laughs> I know this, I may have to aid my own self here. But if you stand on that word. And you stand on what's right and you stand on what truth is. I'm telling you, there'll be sarcasm on what you said. I've seen it. I've heard it with my own lips. I've had people come back and tell me. I'm telling you, preacher, when you said that, I didn't like it. I didn't like this and I didn't like that and I didn't like that. I mean, my goodness. I mean, holiness, holiness, holiness. Is that all you're going to preach on? I mean, come on, preacher. If you're looking for truth, There'll be interruptions on your way. And there'll be sarcasm on what you say. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. There ain't none of us perfect. I don't know who the preacher thinks he is. I'll tell you who this preacher is. He's a nobody. Telling everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Uh, all I am is another beggar telling people where to get bread from. Amen. Why would, you're not disagreeing with me, Jesus said. You're disagreeing with the word. We've all sinned and come short of the glory. Now, 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 preacher, there ain't none of us perfect. I told y'all that's one of the things that makes me cringe. If you think you're perfect, you probably need to be saved. If you think you've arrived, you need to be saved. But if you look at the preacher like he thinks he's like that because he's preaching the word, you don't know what God did to him all week. You don't know the abuse. Hey, 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 well, I don't want to say abuse, but correction that he's got from God all week long. You think it's easy to stand up here and preach on holiness when you know even in yourself there dwelleth no good thing. And you have the gall to put sarcasm on the Word of God. Is it good? I hope it is because it's hurting sometimes. Stick, I'm trying to stick with it now. Huh? We're going to stick with the oracle. Brother Cody. All I remember is when I would sit on the front row, here's what I would think about my pastor. If you'll leave off the third point, I'll go to the altar now. He would skin me up one side and down the other, and I never looked at him like he thought he was self-righteous. I knew he was telling me because he loved me. Did I say I agreed with him on everything? No. But I know he would never tell me anything that would hurt me. But if you're looking for truth, there'll be those who'll be sarcastic. Oh, honey, don't worry about what the preacher says. Worry about how our children feel instead of worry about their soul. Ain't none of us perfect. I can't stand that. I know we're not perfect. You know we're not perfect. But that, why do we use that? It's exactly what we do. We, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't say that because we ought to strive for perfection. 
So that's Bible. We say that because we're trying to pacify somebody's actions. I said the reason we use that scripture is because we are pacifying somebody's actions in our life. Well, ain't nobody perfect. Oh, 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 oh you're going to preach that? I guess you live perfect. Huh, what are you saying? What are you doing? Where is your mindset? Hey, when you say, hey, don't preach on holiness. When God says, be ye therefore holy. Where are you at? Where's your argument? What are we doing? Why is there so much sarcasm behind the Word of God? Again, I, I, y'all stay in your Bibles. I do want to give us a scripture this morning. I'm going to try to move on. Hey, look at what Hebrews 1, I mean Hebrews 6 and chapter 1 says now. In the Bible, here's what it says to us. Here, here's what it says. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection. You know what that says? In, the, in short words, you got, to, you got to take it in context, Brother Jay. So you got to back up chapter 5 and read what chapter 5 said. Chapter 5 saying is there's, it's, it's the time that you ought to be a teacher, but you have need to sit down and hush and let somebody teach you again. Huh? And then Paul would say when he would go on to, he said, therefore, you know, therefore is a reason there's there because of what was before it, amen. And you got to see why it's there. Hey, and the reason he said, therefore, we ought to leave the, in other words, you ought to be grown up by now and you ought not to be saying, well, ain't none of us perfect. You ought to already know how to quote John 3, 16. Now let's move over to 1 John and James. And let's move on over to the book of Jude. Let's move on over and see what Revelation's about. How about read some Romans a little bit? Amen. Hey, what I'm saying is you ought to be grown up a little bit is what that scripture's saying. Would that be the best way to put that? You ought to be grown up by now, but you're still saying we all fall short. I know we ain't perfect church. Come on, that ain't what I'm saying. But we ought to live our lives like we're striving to be. Not living like it's okay because ain't nobody perfect. That just ain't no, that ain't no way to look at it. That's not, that's anti-Bible. And there's sarcasm on what you say. There's sarcasm on it. Is that not what we read this morning now? If you're saying that, if you ever find yourself wanting to say that, then I want you to know something. According to this scripture, you're letting the devil speak through you. You're not holy. You're not super holy. You've arrived and you've got liberty in Christ to do what you want to do. Huh? That is not what that means at all. It means you've got liberty in Christ. Hey, you can do what you want to, but your owner says you want to please him. That's the liberty. I don't have to be sin. I don't have to go for sin. I don't have to live in my flesh. Hey, he that liveth in the flesh shall die, but he who mortify the deeds of the body through the Spirit shall live. We see if we're trying to find truth this morning. There's interruptions on the way. There's sarcasm at what you say. I wrote this down, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. I was going to move on, but I'm going to say it. When you speak like this woman spoke, that demon spoke in her. That's called repurposed truth. Satan started that. Repurposed truth. You're taking the truth and you're repurposing it to say what you want it to say. She didn't say that because they were servants of the Most High God that was showing the way of salvation. Hallelujah, glory to God. She was saying that they were servants of the Most High God to show the way of salvation. Smart aleckly, to put doubt in people's minds. Amen. If you're going to find the truth, there's interruptions on the way. There's sarcasm of what you say. And I couldn't leave this one off because it's in there. But look in verse 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers. If you're looking for the truth, there'll be interruptions along the way. There'll be sarcasms of what you say. And here we see there'll be indignation. 
because of pain. Oh, yeah. The almighty dollar is what people spiritually live by. If I don't like what the preacher's saying, I'll take my tithes and go somewhere else. I would come to work, but I got a big job, and if the money's there, I got to get it while I can. Their spiritualness is wrapped around their money. I run a business all my life since I was working, pretty much. And it was all about the money. Oh, yeah, I mean, what? come on, y'all, you work, you work for money. I mean, let's don't get crazy now, let's be honest. But when I got saved, I said, hmm, I ain't going to worry about money no more. And that's when money was, I've never been rich, now that ain't what I'm saying. But money, my light bill was always paid, is what I'm saying. I know I'm in the Bible. Y'all know I am. Everybody can quote the verse that God had to say. Huh? What did he say? Y'all quote it with me. For the love. They get mad because it gets into their money. When people are searching for the truth. I would hate to know that I interrupted this church at all because of money. I would hate to know that I was involved in anything financially in this church that would hurt this church because of money. But yet, that's where the world's at today. It's a money thing. It's a, it's a, it, they're, they're, if you don't know what indignation is, that means anger because of money. That's what we see, amen? Hey, the, you want to you wanna follow the money? Hey, here we got mad masters now is what it says. Hey, mad masters, follow the market, follow the magistrates. Look at what it says now in the Bible. Hey, underline them in your Bible. Follow the magistrates, go on down to verse 22. Follow the multitude. Hey, if you want to find out where the trouble is, you can just follow the money. Follow the money and you can see where the trouble is. Hey, politicians, if you want to, hey, follow that money, you'll see what, why they do what they do. Not only is it in politics, but now it's in the church house. I thank God I don't know anything, Brother Tony, going on here. Maybe you do. I don't know anything. Thank God I can preach this with a clear heart. But I'm telling you, these churches all the time, and all the preacher wants to do is say, send in your money, send in your money, send in your money, send in your money. Hey, I want you to be obedient to God, but I, don't, I could care less what you pay in in your money. Amen? I, it don't matter to me. It does not, I'm not here for the money. I'm here for the master. My Lord. If you're searching for the truth, there's indignation because of pain. There's interruptions on the way. There's sarcasm in what you say. Simple, ain't it? Write this down quick because I want you to come get us off. But in all of that, Somebody that's really searching for the truth. You can have babies making noises around you. It don't matter. The night I got saved, you could have had the Conway High School marching band behind me, and I never heard them. When you're searching for the truth, nothing's going to matter. You can have interruptions on the way. You can have people sarcastic on what you say, and you can have people that's mad because they're paid. Hey you, can, hey, hey, you can have all that around you. You can have the devil himself fighting after you, but if you are looking for the truth, look at what we see now. Hey, I'm talking about divination today. If you're looking for the truth, if you're searching for something that's what you need in your life, look at verse number 18. And this she did many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned unto the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus, Christ come out of her and he came out that same hour I want to say if you're looking for the truth there'll be interruptions on the way hey there'll be sarcasm in what you say indignation because of pain but there'll be salvation that day Amen. Woo! salvation that day Oh, I know what's going on out in the world. I know what's happening around here. Hey, I know what's going on. I know people, how they live. But I'm telling you, they could be salvation today. If you're looking for it. If prayers won't. 
in your life. That's what you came for this morning. There'd be salvation today. What she came for, what she was following for, all got tossed to the side. And she got delivered. And today, the same thing can happen. If the devil tried to keep you from here this morning, if I was you, I wouldn't wait. I said, I'll stand. I'd run right now to this altar. And there could be salvation today. As we all stand all over the house of the Lord this morning, there can be salvation right now. That same hour, she was healed. That same hour. You don't have to wait. You don't have to do this. and You don't have to do that. Hey, there's going to be interruptions. The devil's going to tell you right now to wait a while. Huh? Somebody around you is going to make a little noise Is going to try to distract you Hey the devil is going to do everything he can He's already whispering in your ear You ain't got to listen to that old preacher He's, an old, he's too old fashioned now He's a fuddy duddy type guy Hey, you don't have, It don't have to be like that I didn't even preach on holiness today But the devil will tell you that I'm talking about when you in search of the truth What will happen But in the name of Jesus Christ, salvation can come. It's in the scripture. You can see it. Salvation come. He said, she said, this is the ones who show people salvation. And she found it herself. How about you this morning? They began to sing. How about it? I've heard that his grace was amazing. I've heard of his wonderful have you felt that this morning? I've heard how his love lifted sinners. Have you found the peace of God that passeth all understanding in your life? Have you come this morning searching for something? I was so lost in hell When we had prayer around the altar, are you the one who couldn't wait to come down and pray? Or did you just sit and see? Friend, I want you to know you don't even know what God's able to do for you this morning. Salvation can come to this house today. Hey, maybe you're not where you need to be with God. Maybe you're backslid on God. You ain't been living for God. Hey, you ain't been praying. That's the one thing people can lie about, praying. Huh? Are you hearing me? That's the one thing people can lie about. See, they can't lie about reading their Bible. Because if you read your Bible, it'll show. You can't lie about coming to church because if you ain't here, you ain't here. lie about praying because ain't nobody right there at you. But God knows you lying about that too. Hey. Because if you were praying you'd be reading your Bible. If you was praying you'd be coming to church. If you was praying you'd be witnessing to the law. If you was praying you'd say I want prayer and I'm not going to let anything get in my way. This world can't contain just how good he is. With all the negative particles in that scripture, salvation still came in. All the negative verses, the devil fighting. People's mad at him. They called him the law on him. You know what happened to him? They got put in jail and got beat for it. But people still were getting saved. Salvation today. Jesus is faithful and 
I was searching, but I didn't really know how bad I was searching. But today's God's come by your pew right where you're at. You felt the Holy Spirit move. You don't. You didn't know it was Him, but you felt it. And He's telling you, I've come by today to save you. Tonight I got saved. I wasn't looking for truth, but truth came by, and salvation came by. I just wanted forgiveness. I parted for all I had. I tell you, it feels good in this place. I did I was lost this morning. I'd come get saved, is what I'm trying to say. Washed clean and made whole was enough. Don't let nothing interrupt you this morning. But he's more than I ever imagined. You could be singing this song more by tonight. More precious than silver or gold. Oh, Jesus is Hey, God sees you right there. Hey, hey, friend, I'll say something. God sees you right there where you're at. I'm not calling you out. I'm saying God sees you. He knows. This world can't contain. He loves you this morning. How good he is. How unworthy I am. Oh, praise his dear name. What are you waiting on? Things in your life's interrupted you. Well, I was going to get saved, but this happened and that happened. And I was going to church, but I kind of fell out. Life got busy. Interruptions was in my way. That's what the devil wants to do. If you're seeking truth today, and I believe everybody's searching for truth. I don't believe nobody wants to live a lie. I believe everybody's searching for truth this morning. You need to be saved. I tell you, we're not going to be in a hurry to leave around here. Never are. If you want to come and talk to us, we'll be glad to come and pray with you. Half's yet been told. We, we look into a glass darkly. We don't know the things God's able to do. But we'll pray. We'll go to prayer. Salvation can come. In the midst of all that negative stuff, I know it. Salvation was still there that day. That hour, the Bible says. Huh? Didn't save her the next day. They didn't do a home visit. And she gets saved there at her couch. And, no, 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 no. That day, salvation came. Right then. I love the Word of God. Amen. We love you. So good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Thank you for singing this morning. Thank you for singing that song, Brother Hunter. That was of God. Amen. Let's remember all these things we've got coming up around the church here. Amen. Let's remember we've got our ladies and men's meeting uh, Tuesday night there in the fellowship hall. The meal was already provided for that. They're working on it. So everyone just come on out. If you've not been able to come to one of those lately, come and see what's going on. Brother Carl can tell you the men's uh, group is just it's phenomenal to sit in there and listen. What we're simply doing is taking a chapter out of the Bible and uh, uh, everybody's reading it. And then um, that night we'll sit around. We'll just talk about it. There's no right or wrong answers. I mean, we don't want to get crazy about stuff, but you know what I'm saying. And we just discuss it, see how the Lord spoke to us. We go around the room on it, and it's good stuff, isn't it, Brother Carl? And uh, if you've not been to one of those, uh, I remember, uh, I won't call names, but somebody came. We didn't have one last month, but the month before. And they said, I'm just going to sit in. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. And then by the time we got about halfway around the room, they were like, well, I guess I'll say something. And, uh, and we're thankful for that. Let's remember this on Tuesday night, this Tuesday night coming up. Also on September the 10th, we have uh, uh, Brother Wayne uh, Snipes is coming to give us an update on the Free Will Baptist Family Ministries and the work there. And also September 24th, big day coming, uh, old-fashioned day. Amen. And we have uh, the cooks is already lined up that and got everything uh, going to be prepared. Don't worry about any of that. But we do need some decorators and some setup and, and clean up people. So if you want to help out on this, please get with us and let us know. Amen. Any other announcements?
Amen. All right. Anything else? Worthy to be praised. All right. If all hearts and minds are clear this morning, I'm going to ask Brother Carl. Brother Carl, if you will, we'll dismiss us in prayer, brother.